Doug Flynn joins us, Flynn Zito Capital Management. Told you stocks go up and, and stocks go down, Doug. That's the whole point of this uh, thing. So this, uh, this whole idea that the market was crashing on Monday, I mean, it was a tough day in Japan, <laughs> but um, right. it was just a pullback here. What do you, what do you think's next here? I mean, how, what do you make of this market? Yeah, it seems like that Monday was an overreaction to some negative news, and now perhaps today was an overreaction to some positive news and that the weekly jobless claims were a little uh, better than expected. Right. Uh, there's still negative news floating around there, and there was still positive news floating around on Monday, uh, but the, the reactions are sort of exaggerated. So I, this kind of just puts us back to where we were before. It doesn't change the, the fundamentals that everything is just okay, but we're slowing and we need the Fed to get in here. So we're going to kind of keep doing this, I think, until we get the Fed to finally cut like the everyone's been waiting for. Which they will in September, right? I, I don't think uh, as many people are talking about that uh, in-between meetings cut like no. we had that conversation Monday. This is a Dow. All right, so two things. So you mentioned jobless claims. Yes, that number was better. So that kind of plays off. The, the jobs report last Friday um, was not strong. I didn't think it was terrible, to your point about no. overreactions, especially since it looked like hurricane had an effect on it, and maybe next month will be a little better than, you know, get, get a little bit of a bounce back. So that's one thing. The second thing today was interesting, mortgage rates down again. So, um, you know, for regular people that, you know, 647, you'll take that over where we were. It's a uh, 15 month low. All right. So, so what does it tell you about the economy, though? Because we're all trying to put odds on sure. slowdown versus recession. Yeah, I mean, recession, uh, JP Morgan came out today and raised their recession uh, possibility for this year up to 35%. So okay. look, look, there's no question that if the Fed doesn't act, the recession odds increase dramatically. But I think we all know they're going to act. So we can keep talking about the fact that, yes, the recession odds are increasing. The numbers are going to keep getting like this slightly degrading. Um, and if they do nothing, we're going to have a problem. But I, I suspect they're going to do something. And then we'll be talking about, you know, the next leg of where do we go from there. Uh, it's great news that the interest rates came down. Now, bond yields went up again. So you're going to see those those mortgage rates tick back up next week because it kind of follows a little bit on that. Uh, but that is a good news. You want to see that con uh, continuing to go down. Mm -hmm. And if the Fed does lower rates by about 2 percent between now and the end of next year, you're going to finally see those mortgage rates back into the fives and then perhaps the fours. Yeah. And then all those people that are stuck in there with the 3% mortgages are finally going to start letting them go. And that's when you begin the next leg of everything moving that's forward again. That's the thing. Again. People don't want to move because they say, well, man, I'm paying nothing for this house and I'm not getting <laughs> giving up what I refinanced uh, during COVID. Exactly. Um, okay. That said, let's just end on a little bit of politics because all this is happening in the mid middle of a presidential campaign. We watched Trump in Mar-a-Lago uh, earlier than Harris was out with uh, with. Tim Walls. So Trump said a bunch of stuff on the economy. He said a lot of things. Some of the stuff on the economy, there was some, some nutty stuff in there. He was talking about how we should be in a depression like 1929 for some reason. But he also got into his policy on taxes uh, and said this. Watch. I'm also doing no tax on tips. No tax on tips. So waiters, waitresses, caddies, uh, people that drive cars, people that get tips who have been harassed by this government, we're going to have no tax on tips. That's a big thing. He says it's a big thing. And, you know, just politically, I would say it's a big, it might be in a state like Nevada, for example, which is a swing state. Yeah. Um, what do you make of it as an economic policy? I mean, no tax on tips, I don't think is going to cost that much money, but I think it is something very appealing to a lot of people. And today he also came out and said he wants to do no tax on Social Security, which is actually very costly because a lot of people do pay taxes on their Social Security. So uh, obviously he's trying to appeal to those key groups. Whether or not you'll actually get that passed, I don't <laughs> know. Uh, but it's it's politics and it is interesting if you are able to get it passed in a way that you can. His interesting thing about the, the no tax on Social Security that I find amazing was that his way to pay for it is to actually not pay for it. It's to actually crash the Social Security system to the point where Congress finally has to do something. So rather than just continually kick the can down the road, right. force them into fixing it. So it's a totally different take on maybe fixing it, because as we, we've talked about, Social Security is the third rail. Nobody wants to touch it. So maybe you know, something in there might happen positively. I don't know. Yes, as you remind us many times, you ruin these political conversations by saying, oh, none of it's going to get done anyway. So um, thank you, Doug, as always, on the money, Doug Flynn there.